If you don't know anything else about me, you know I love the comments. Hello, 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 hello. Your best sojourner here. Listen, if you have not subscribed, liked, followed, shared, commented, please, 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 please do. How else am I going to get the information spread across the YouTube verse and the interweb? But also, how else am I going to get in communication with you if you don't comment? I love the comments listen today i want to chat about which is more important having an essay or establishing a spend history mm. this is what i want to chat about i know this is something i considered when i first started my airman's journey i must say ultimately having both is the most idea that would be my immediate answer. If someone asked me this, I would say both, okay? First and foremost, having both. But if you're only able to establish one, for instance, you're unable to click with an essay or you're unable to frequent airmen, so you can't really focus on your spin history, then this is when that question would come into play. So I would say find a store that you like and will want to frequent. So if the store is distant, make sure it works for your travel plans and it's something that you can basically budget and plan um, for to make trips to. So for instance, for me and for France, I always make sure when we're, when we're planning that I budget and I start to plan for that trip because I know for sure I will be going to Hermes when we are there. That's one thing to consider. The, the next, next thing is find items you like. So I know this is very controversial. Some people say, you know, it's not about what you like, but I feel if you find items that you like and love, then you are able to establish a rapport with the essay because they'll learn your taste and your style. Now that is applicable to if you have an ongoing essay. An, an example is you're not going to France, for instance, for me, I'm not going to France one time and I'm only able to go that one time for like a couple of days and then come back to the US and I probably will not go back for a while. So I will probably will not see that same essay. This really isn't applicable to that, but if you are in a space or a location where an Hermes is relatively close or a, you're able to travel so frequently that you are able to build a rapport with a specific essay or an essay that once they're gone, they can hand, hand off your information and you can establish a, a report with another essay, then this I feel is applicable. So, so in order for the essay to get your style and your aesthetic, like for myself, and when I go to my essay, be it here or in France, here in the US or in France, they basically know my my aesthetic and my style. So they know, for instance, retro. That's just who I am. That's what I love. So when I look for items, that's what I'm looking for. And they've picked up on that relatively quickly. So all the things that they have suggested thus far has been that. Now, listen, there have been some misses, but I also feel that that is another way for things to evolve so that they learn more about you. Like for instance, my essay here sent me a, a picture of a coat that she thought would interest me and it was like a leather coat. It was something that you probably would see in like one of the 80s or 90s action movies like Sylvester Stallone in a full leather jacket like no it was not for me and I just let her know that that, that I know and you know, that goes back to let me echo the fact that you know you don't have to accept everything that's offered to you you just don't so don't believe that another reason to find items that you like and love is it also if the store is closer to you you have the option to periodically visit the store more frequently for me for instance it's scarves i'm in love with their scarves so that drives me to say okay i will attempt to visit the hermes 
like at least once a month maybe not even that at this point but when i am looking for an item i know exactly what i'm looking for and even when hubs is looking for something for me he knows listen he knows that i love scarves so he knows exactly what to get for me and where to look for those items the other piece of advice I have is don't do online shopping. I know it is so tempting, especially currently because they're dropping so many things, but I'm just going to say, I'm not sure if that, and I've said this several times already, but I'm not sure that the purchase history for online is the exact same as if you're in store because the system does not work that way currently that I'm aware of. I know it works that way for quota bag because I got a quota bag in france and i got a quota bag here both in france and the us they can see my quota bags they are fully aware that i have had a quota bag this year because hubs and i have separate accounts so we each have had a quota bag so with that i can't go and get another quota bag or he can either currently not until next year so when the systems communicate across the board i for me, I believe it'll be a lot easier when it comes to items because then we have more freedom to purchase online. But if you're just starting your journey, do not buy items online. Try to go in the store. If you do not have uh, Hermes close to you, like I said, hopefully you're able to plan for that in the future and just create a list of the items and start budgeting and saving for that i i online shopping when you're first starting off is it's not idea it just does not it doesn't count it doesn't count towards your in-store purchase history so just keep that in mind now since we're on our the spin then the next question I have is big purchases or small purchases over time my biggest question when it comes to this one is which can you afford now be honest with yourself right like which can you afford if you can do a big spend then okay you know if you can afford it do a big spend or if you're willing to save and then do a big spend then do a big spend Let's say you have the monies, right? You're all ready, but you get to Hermes and they don't have all the things that you you want or like. You have your answer. Like if they have all the things that you want and like, then spend. If they don't have all the things you want and like, then you know that's completely up to you. But in my opinion, I would not just spend money just to spend money. So that's that's another thing to consider what's in stock what's available in the store don't buy things you don't want and won't use i know this is a controversial thing to say because the belief is you should buy things across the store but you should also buy because if you don't spend you won't be offered anything and in my opinion i feel that if you don't want it and you're not going to use it don't buy it because then you have to figure out how to offload it so if you're going to resell it if you're going to whatever you're going to do give it away i don't know it's it takes time and energy and i don't believe in in wasting my time and energy because those are non-renewable resources my time and energy is not renewable resource so I would prefer to get things that I like and I know I'll use in comparison to not. I know different circumstances call for different things. You may be in in a location where there's an airman's for only a short period of time and you're really trying to get the quota bag. Well, you know, it it all depends on you. And it's a choice you have to make ultimately at the end of the day. Everything I say here could just be thrown aside and you have to make that decision. I say make the decision that you feels best for you. For this session, as we're chatting, I'm gonna stick with what I, the questions I've posed. If Hermes doesn't have what you want, then spend over time. That answers itself, right? If they don't have what you want, spend over time. If you prefer to spread out your spending, then, you know, 
spread out your spending it can be a more effective approach because you're still establishing a his a spin history that is really what's required is that you're building some type of history this approach also allows you to build your confidence in the space so i mentioned in a previous video that sometimes we begin to doubt our self-worth or we start to question if we even belong in a space. So by going in, you know, every so often or as much as you are able to, depending on the distance, you gradually begin to build your confidence in being in those spaces. And I feel that is a very, very effective approach. I feel that that, that can also work to your benefit. The pros and cons for the big spend. Ultimately, the big spend shows that you mean business, but it does not guarantee you'll get offered a quota bag or any bag for that matter. So that's just the truth. That's an honest truth. So you can go to, for for example, France, and you could spend a bunch of money, but there is no guarantee that you'll be offered anything, quota, non-quota. A big spend is very costly. So you have to determine if you can actually afford it. Do not go broke doing these things. Just don't, just don't. Now, when you spend as you go, it does show a commitment and it also allows you to build a rapport steadily. And I think that is very, there's something about that, right? That you can steadily do that. So for instance, when I was in France, it was a big spin, but then at the same time, I continued to build a rapport with my essay. Here in the US, it's been a big, kind of a big spin. It's not as big as France, but I've continuously, steadily showed up and made purchases over time. And that has been the building of the rapport. By spending over time, you could be mindful of how you're spending. And I think that is very important, especially if you are more financially conscious and one of those individuals who really does pay attention to your spending. You can also focus on what's in season. So by spending over time, you can take your time in figuring out the pieces that you want by season as they are released. And I feel that that's beneficial because I was able to do that when I was in France, seeing I was in between seasons. So I was able to take advantage and see both the seasons while I was there and that was nice. But spending over time also means it may take time for you to be offered a quota bag. So that's the other side to that. Of course, I still believe there's a certain amount you have to spend. Everyone believes this. So with that, you need to be mindful that if you're taking your time and you're spending over time, it may take more time to, to be offered a quota bag. Now that doesn't mean non-quota bags won't be offered, okay? Because I was offered my Picatin, which is a non-quota bag, uh, long before I even hit like a big spin amount, period. I was offered that bag pretty quickly. So if you're close to an Hermes, the frequency of your visit will be predicated on that. Regardless of your approach, so these are side notes, regardless of your approach, track what you spend and i got this idea from at cat l let me tell you she can she created a spreadsheet i think she said of what she was spending and how much she was spending and i thought what she said was ingenious because when at first when she was going in she was just spending and she wasn't paying attention to how much she was spending versus the cost of the quarterback she was after. And let me tell you, I think that that is very, a very smart approach. And so after I saw that, I started to do the same thing. So I keep a spreadsheet of what we've spent and um, keeping in mind if we're getting close to the cost of, for instance, a Birkin or a Kelly, a quota bag. Because if we're getting close, that's when I'm at a point where I'm just like, okay, let me ask the essay, um, one of my essays, 
where, you know, where we stand, because I want to be clear, you know, that yes, I am here to secure a bag. And with that, I'm going to spend accordingly, but I'm not going to spend ridiculously. I'm just not. It just so happened in France, we needed a number of things and Hermes just checked all the boxes. So we were able to get a number of things that we were actually looking for while we were there. Now, when we came back, as far as being here in the US, that was not applicable. So all the things that I ended up getting as of lately or wanting that's even on my list are very basic things like scarves, still ready to wear a piece, you know, but it wasn't several ready to wear pieces or several scarves. It was very, it's been very, very limiting when it comes to the, the list of things that I was looking for and wanting. So for instance, another Kelly belt. So that's like three things, even though when it comes to scarves, I will get a number of scarves because I just really like the scarves and I like to get the different sizes. So yeah, track your spending track it ultimately at the end of the day you could do a mix of both you could do a big spin and you could spin over time who says you cannot that's what i did in france that's what i've kind of done here in the u.s and um it all depends on where i am and what i'm wanting but then also financially if i have budgeted for that now i know if you're traveling abroad and visiting a big spin may be the best approach because you're not going to be there as frequently as you would if you're in the US and your 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 you know the Hermes closest to you is in the US. So I I get that. You know, certain circumstances require certain approaches and that's why I said earlier, you know, the choice is yours. This is the last piece does what you wear matter i'm gonna tell you absolutely it matters what you wear matters what should you wear i stuck with a very minimalist look basically i stick with basics from hermes chloe prada maximara um belmont um alexander mcqueen these are a number of things that I have worn when I went into the Hermes boutique. Now, bags, I always carry a, a nice designer bag. So I carried, when I first went in, my vintage Kelly um, Cellier in size 32 with gold hardware. That was the first um, bag I carried. Then I carried my Picatin. Um, 18 with palladium hardware, uh, my Picatin lock, and I carried that one time. Now here in the U.S., I've carried my Picatin lock, I've carried my Birkin 30 in gold with palladium hardware. So I'm always making sure I always make sure I carry an Hermes bag if I if I own an Hermes bag. If I don't, I would say carry what you have as long as it is a very nice bag. It, it shouldn't matter. Shoes, I've worn Hermes loafers. I've worn Hermes sneakers. Wear any shoe you want. As long as they're, you know, very nice, clean shoes, it does not matter. That's my opinion. And honestly, the way sneakers look nowadays, some of the designer sneakers, they look like they're worn anyway. So I don't, you know, wear, wear whatever shoes you like and wear what you feel comfortable in. That's so what I will say, where would you feel comfortable in? Where you, when you put it on, you know you're gonna show up as yourself. Wear that, wear that. That's what I'll say to that. Accessories, you know me. I wear my everyday, um, my everyday pieces. The only exception is I will change the band of my um, Apple Watch because it's the Hermes. So I wear the Hermes strap, the thin strap. And then I also change the face so that it matches but I always wear the same stack. And I also wear the rings when I'm at home and I'm recording, I do not wear all my rings. I just don't. No. Um, so just know you don't have to spend a lot on what you're wearing, okay? Shop high low, right? You can shop and buy some pieces even on the pre-love market. You can buy so many good 
solid pieces on the pre-love market. The only suggestion I have is make sure you check the price on a pre-love market versus what is available in store. If it is relatively close, don't buy it on a pre-love market unless it's something uber rare, then the choice is yours. But I, I just don't. Another thing is shop discounts and sales from the outlets. You know, there's so many outlets even online nowadays that sell so many nice designers from Saint Laurent, Prada, so on and so forth. You know, check those outlets out as well because you'll be able to save a lot of money and still have the look you're wanting effortlessly. So I got this idea as well from politics and fashion. I will put her handle below and she has done several videos on this topic and I feel it is very useful information because you don't have to go in with everything brand new. No one is paying that close of attention. I mean, seriously, I, I just don't know. I went in, let me see. One time I went in, I had on a pair of um, jeans, a Belmont jacket, and I wore my Max Mara um, camel coat and a white bodysuit underneath. And I did have on an Hermes belt and Hermes shoes. And like I said, I carried the Kelly that day. Another time I went in, I wore a pair of Alexander McQueen slacks. And I don't even remember the top I wore. It was very um, simplistic. I think it was Prada. Um, but everything was just, you know me, I love my neutrals. You know, I love monochrome. So that's basically what I stick to. What I would suggest to you is to find what you feel most confident and comfortable in and wear that. Whatever is you, wear that. You know, it doesn't take a ton of money to show up into the shop. Be presentable. That's all I could say. I don't know what else I could say here. I mean, even if you went in, I've seen people go in with like blue jean overalls and a, you know, tattered shirt and they still got good service. So, I mean, yes, it does matter, but don't be consumed by it. So I think that is it. And I'm going to say until next time, my beautiful, beautiful people. And yeah, thanks for stopping by.